This is the ROG Strix G16. It sits right below the SCAR series, which offers more features and hiring component choices. Now, I just recently checked out the SCAR 17 featuring AMD's flagship Ryzen 9 mobile CPU, but that came in a previous generation design. The G16 that I have over here comes with an Intel CPU and a newer design, but it's not priced as high as the SCAR Intel series or even AMD for that matter. However, the specs for this particular lineup is all over the place. The lowest price queue comes with a Core i9-3980HX CPU and an RTX 4050 laptop GPU powering a Quad HD Plus 240Hz display. If you bump that up to an RTX 4060, you get downgraded to an i7 CPU with a 1200p 165Hz panel. The i9 CPU makes a comeback with the RTX 4070 spec that I have over here, but it seems like they wanted to stick to a 1200p display instead of Quad HD. I really have an odd spec here, guys, but if you really need that fast refresh rate, it's gonna cost you around 2,200 US dollars. So it looks like Asus is trying to cut back on certain parts in order to cover the Nvidia tax. Now I'm gonna tackle the first thing that people have been talking about with these laptops, and that's the horrible backlit bleed that some of you have been experiencing. Well, it's, it's true, I, I've been noticing it myself. This panel exhibits some of the worst bleeding spots around the corners, notably the top left-hand side on my sample. That's just not acceptable for a laptop in this price range, and it gets distracting when you're watching movies at night. Now keep in mind, this is a Nebula display and not Nebula HDR that comes with the SCAR Intel series that supposedly has better color gamut and better brightness levels. Now in terms of color, this panel is pretty average. It only covers 99% sRGB, 76% uh, Adobe RGB, and 79% P3. So it's not as vibrant as the SCAR series, Brightness levels are some of the worst I've come across. Our sample was only able to sustain around 300 nits at 100%. So all in all, for the price, this display is below average, and that's not okay. Now my gaming experience was pretty good, but as a content creator, it lacks sharpness for my workflow, and I miss having more screen real estate, but that's because I've been spoiled by high resolution displays uh, in the same form factor. You see, a 1200p at 240Hz or even 360Hz would have made more sense, especially for esports players, since they value high refresh rate above anything else. This particular spec, in my opinion, it's just meh. So I would highly recommend upgrading to the Quad HD plus 240Hz display because it's a lot brighter and uh, it also covers more color gamut as well. So. Yeah, there's that. Now I wanna shift gears and talk about the design of this laptop because there's a lot of cool details that Asus has implemented, which makes it somewhat unique compared to the competition. The top cover is made out of aluminum and it comes in this Eclipse gray finish that looks awesome. The RG logo is not backlit, but rather it's laser etched. It gives it a nice subtle and stealthy look, which I personally like. You also get these cool cyberpunk inspired patterns that shape around the exhaust vents. I really like the continuity here. Even the alpha numeric code at the bottom that translates to ROG is a nice touch. I like the little notch uh, around the webcam. It makes it easier to open the lid with just one hand. The build quality is pretty good. Other than the aluminum top lid, everything else is made out of plastic, but it's put together really well. Um, there's less keyboard flex and the hinge is pretty stiff. I didn't notice any major wobbling uh, with my sample. Now in terms of size, even though this is a 16 inch gaming laptop, it's a fairly thick chassis coming in at 1.2 inches or 30 millimeters. That's the thickest Z height I've ever seen on a gaming laptop, guys. But that's partly due to the new ROG Intelligent Cooling System. Yes, that's what ASUS calls it. It comes with three fans and a larger heatsink compared to previous generation designs. Now, how will that translate to performance and temperatures? We'll find out soon. But yeah, this is a thick chassis that weighs around two and a half kilos or roughly five pounds. Uh, the power adapter is pretty compact as it's rated for 280 watts and it charges the laptop with the standard uh, barrel style connector. The port setup is pretty decent. On the left, you get 2.5G LAN, HDMI 2.1, uh, Thunderbolt 4, USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C with display port and PD up to 100 watts and an audio jack. And towards the right, you get a couple of USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A ports. I was hoping for more ports at the back, but that's out of question uh, considering the cooling setup. Speaking of cooling setup, this new monitor from Corsair looks pretty dope.
be ready to be captivated by a fusion of vivid colors, deeper blacks, and a wicked fast 240Hz refresh rate with Corsair's Xenion Flex gaming monitor. Featuring the world's first bendable OLED display in a stunning 45-inch WQHD ultra-wide aspect ratio, immerse yourself in gaming and other productive tasks. You get all the extra goodies for ultimate speed and precision within a game, get quick access to a few USB ports at the front and plenty of other display connectivity options at the back, and all this tech is backed with their advanced burn-in protection and a three-year warranty. If you're looking to flex your gaming setup, look no further than Corsair Xenion Flex. Learn more down below. Okay, so the keyboard and trackpad haven't changed all that much, but there are some tasteful design cues on the deck uh, that complement the rest of the chassis. But there are a few things that caught my attention. First of all, the marketing image that ASUS has on their official website does not align with the G16 that I have in front of me. Some images have an RGB lit logo at the back and a built-in numpad within the trackpad, but that's just not true, at least with the spec that I have over here. We reached out to ASUS about this, and it turns out that they're a bit confused as well, so they are cross-checking with their marketing team to see which one's accurate. This is what happens when you have 50 different models spanning across the SCAR and G-Series. But anyways, the keyboard is awesome, the RGB lighting looks okay, but I was hoping for a brighter output since some of the keys lack consistency, but the light bar located underneath the keyboard has improved in terms of diffusion. The trackpad is awesome, it is a precision glass surface, so it's super smooth to navigate with. This is what the webcam looks like on the Strix G16. Now, the quality is not super great because they are using a 720p sensor, so not the greatest details, and of course you can see my skin exposure is just kind of all over the place. Um, the microphone sounds really good because ASUS has implemented their AI noise cancelling setup here, so it's great for casual meetings and all sorts of things. The speakers are placed at the bottom, so it does lack clarity and bass, uh, the volume output is pretty low, so for general content consumption needs, this ain't gonna work out. But I actually wanna pose a question to you guys. Do you really care about built-in speakers on gaming laptops? Because I know most people end up using external headphones uh, for their gaming sessions, which is probably what I would do, but you know, this is a laptop after all that's used for everything else, but not just gaming. So yeah, I'm just curious to see if you guys are, you guys really care about built-in speakers. Now, getting underneath the hood is pretty straightforward. ASUS has finally integrated the light bar with the PCB, so you don't have cables dangling around. You'll also see the upgraded cooling system with the additional fan for better airflow. There are two sodium slots. Maximum supported memory is only 32 gigabytes, but the SCAR 16 can do 64 gigabytes. That's a really odd trade-off in my opinion. The primary NVMe SSD is right over here. There's also an extra M.2 slot right over here for storage expansion. The battery life on the G16 is surprisingly pretty good, even though it's rocking a top tier Intel CPU. I mean, getting over six hours in a web browsing test is unheard of on a gaming laptop with these specs. But we believe the RTX 4070 paired with a 1200p display that only goes as far as 300 nits plays a major role here. Even our 4K YouTube playback test did fairly well on the G16. So by now you know that we have a pretty bizarre spec layout with Intel's absolutely highest end laptop processor, uh, but with a mid-tier graphics card. So if you're looking to maximize your CPU horsepower, it is an interesting option, especially when you consider how far the RG team ended up pushing this thing. Because the turbo setting hits 4 gigahertz at 140 watts, and while this isn't one of the highest power levels we've seen, the noise this thing puts out is pretty insane at 55 decibels. And it still runs at 92 degrees, which goes to show how power hungry and hot Intel's 13th gen chips are. If you're okay taking a 500 megahertz clock speed hit, performance mode is there with a good balance of speeds, temperatures, and noise, and you won't have to put up with the clock speed knee capping silent mode does. And what does that lead to overall performance? Well, the Strix G16 is actually the fastest Intel-based laptop we've ever tested because it even beats the MSI Titan, which is a lot bigger, weighs a lot more, and it looks like a device designed in 2010 rather than a modern laptop. That really goes to show how far the G16 has come in terms of overall performance versus size. The only thing that's faster is the insane SCAR 17 that's rocking a Ryzen 9 7945HX, but I need to mention that that processor only needed 92 watts to match a 3980HX running at 140 watts. I mean, that's bad news for Intel, guys. Resolve and Premiere, on the other hand, I mean, it's pretty hard to beat Intel CPUs by a wide margin or at all, since they can leverage their QSV cores in Premiere in particular, and are still pretty strong in Resolve 2. And what about gaming performance? Because remember, this laptop's got an odd spec. 
Core i9 CPU paired with an RTX 4070. So you're paying a premium for the processor, which has a pretty limited influence on gaming frame rates while getting a mid-tier GPU. Well, on the positive side, the G16 has this thing running at close to its maximum 115 watts TGP in both turbo and performance modes. As a matter of fact, those two settings run the GPU in pretty much identical clock speeds, but with one key difference, and that's noise. Now, considering the frequencies here, I don't see absolutely any reason to use turbo mode since it's super loud and the benefits it gives you are minimal to none. So that's the story with the ROG Intelligent Cooling System. I mean, <sighs> the third friend doesn't look like it was doing that much, but yeah, that's how it handles the hardware inside. So what happens when we use performance and turbo in a real world gaming scenario? And what about that RTX 4070? Because I know that GPU has received a lot of criticism lately, but you gotta remember, ASUS is running in at just over 100 watts which is a heck of a lot more than what some other laptop manufacturers set as their TGP. But that still doesn't hide the fact that this thing's only got around 8 gigabytes of memory, running at across a 128-bit bus. So let's run this thing through 1080p, 1440p, and 4K resolutions to see what happens. So performance ended up being a heck of a lot more competitive than I thought, at least to this laptop's native 1200p resolution. As a matter of fact, when the 4070 is running around 100 watts, it is easily able to match or even sometimes beat the low wattage RTX 4090 running in Asus's own M16. But move beyond 1080p and things start to go a bit downhill. At 1440p, where the G16 trails a lot to other laptops, and the wheels just completely fall off at 4K, where the RTX 4070 simply runs out of memory. I can't really hold that against it though, since this spec doesn't even come with a 4K display. So that's everything that you need to know about the ROG Strix G16. Would I recommend it? Well, I mean, if performance is your number one priority, sure, but you gotta realize that the 4070 has limitations at high resolutions if you decide to plug it into an external monitor, or if you spec it out with a Quad HD Plus panel. For CPU-focused tasks, this thing is wicked fast. But for me, I look at the big picture. This laptop is just really thick. I mean, it barely fits my backpack. The 1200p display is dim, has a lot of backlit bleed. I was hoping for more IO, and most importantly, Asus's marketing for this laptop is misleading. I mean, they show that it comes with a numpad within the trackpad, but it doesn't. That being said, I do like the design elements. ROG certainly deserves a round of applause. But for $2,000 for this particular spec, guys, I feel like there are better options out there. On that note, thank you so much for watching. Let us know what you guys think about the G16 from ROG. And uh, I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Oh, and by the way, spend responsibly. I'm also recovering from a cold, so there's that. I need to drink more water. Stay hydrated too as well. That's another tip. Spend responsibly and stay hydrated.